So Timmy, you've clicked on this video because you want to find out what happens if all the black holes in the universe collided. Well, luckily for you, Kyle and I have been waiting for you. Right here, on these very chairs. Will the universe end? Will a new one be created? Or perhaps is the universe even inside a black hole already? <laughs> it's time to find out. However, it's first important to see if this is even possible with what we know about the universe. And let me tell you, there is a possibility it could actually happen. Maybe. Unlike our sponsor Squarespace and the all-in-one web platform, that always works. More on that later though, because our universe appears stable, infinite, and is expanding at an accelerating pace. Enough time for you to waste your pitiful life doing whatever it is you actually do to contribute to society. But the universe behaves this way thanks to a few important values. The first is to measure how much stuff is in the universe overall. We call this Omega. Basically, it's how much matter, your everyday stuff, dark matter, the sticky glue of the universe, and dark energy, the mysterious thing that causes it to expand. Right now, Omega is about one, meaning the universe's density is just right for it to be flat and infinite. That also means we could never merge all black holes or be inside a black hole universe, because everything is flying apart faster and faster. To make all black holes collide, gravity would need to dominate. But in a flat, expanding universe, it cannot. Therefore, the second key value is little omega, which describes how dark energy behaves, currently around minus one. All this does is it ensures the universe keeps on expanding forever. If that number ever changed, absolute chaos could follow. Let me promise you that. Maybe the universe would die in a big rip or even a big slurp. Together, these two numbers define how the universe evolves and allows us to see what shape the universe might be and how it will die. Right, now that we've understood that, let's see how all the black holes in the universe COMBOOM! <laughs> oh, sorry, I just love doing that. And it also makes it seem like I have some evil plan, which is only partially true. I just have this weird tick that makes me randomly laugh like an evil villain. Dramatic childhood, I guess. Anyway, I'm going to show you and my friend Kyle right here one possible outcome of the universe that actually allows these black hole collisions to happen, which all begins with step one, stopping the universe expanding. Yes, observations tell us that space looks flat within what we can see, and just as we said, but that doesn't prove it's infinite. We suspect that's the case, but it could still curve back on itself far in the distance. The cosmic microwave background even hints at this with strange low energy patterns. That could mean our universe is ever so slightly closed and not infinite. You know, an edge. So for these black hole collisions, we'll assume that's true. And now there's only one thing left to consider before we begin. See, dark energy only started dominating the universe a few billion years ago. Which means it might not last forever, because for like 9 billion years it did not dominate the universe as we know it does today. That's because its density remains the same. And if everything else around it slowly dies, like stars do, then the universe will keep expanding. Because with more space, you gotta have more dark energy. However, some scientists think that might not necessarily be the case. That there is some data that says, maybe it's not a constant in the universe and it's just a temporary phase. Like that goth phase I went through. The underground tech rays were fantastic though, I will tell you that. So. If dark energy were to stop acting like it supposedly does today, the universe's expansion could slow down, stop, and even reverse. And that's where the fun begins. Every galaxy, every star, every black hole would start feeling each other's pull again. Well, eventually. Over billions of billions of trillions of quadrillions of 10 to the something years. Or about the average waiting time when you want to cancel your phone plan. But before that happens, it's time to finally see some black holes merge. You know, like all of them. Let's rock. Yes, you know that large stars die and become black holes. You know that supermassive black holes are at the center of galaxies. And you know that the largest black holes in the universe can be quasars like Ton 618 or at the center of galactic clusters like Phoenix A. This is important because Phoenix A could be up to 100 billion solar masses and is so large that it attracts perhaps over 40 galaxies around it. Given enough time and the perfect environment, we could see all these black holes merge. So we could have an example of an ultra-massive black hole influencing many galaxies, 
Now imagine the entire universe beginning to act like this too. With me so far guys? Of course you are. It's time for step two, colliding black holes. When this happens in general, it's not some chill, yo what up brother greeting like when my cousin comes over for Sunday brunch. It's more of an obvious scream. Like when I have to flush the toilet after eating the vindaloo from that same Sunday brunch. I have no idea why he keeps bringing that shit up. Anyway, as these black holes spiral closer together, of course it speeds up. And in a simulation like this, you think, okay, they're going to meet soon. No, it can take millions of years orbiting each other at this speed before they actually merge. And when they do, they release more energy in a few seconds than every star in the observable universe combined. And as they finally merge into one, it sounds like a bird chirping. This energy release though is not visible, sadly. It's actually in gravitational waves. That's literally space-time shaking itself and causing a ripple throughout the universe. But if we were to merge all the black holes in the universe like this, how big would that black hole be? Great question, Mongolian horse! Wait, how did, how did he get back here? Did I leave the gate open at home? Nah, it's okay, you can stay. As I was saying, imagine if a 10 solar mass black hole combines with another. The resulting black hole would not be 20 solar masses as you'd expect, no. What's that horsey? Yes, you're correct. Some of that mass is lost as energy. And you know I hate expending unnecessary energy. That's why I like to use Squarespace and their cutting edge design tools to make my websites. It offers a complete library of professionally designed and award winning templates. Once you know what you want to make a website on, it will allow you to bring it to life. Whatever you need, they have it. Whether you need to track SEO so you can actually, you know, know what's going on on your website or send email campaigns of your outrageous arms or need to raise funds for outrageous trips around the universe or, you know, community campaigns, Squarespace saves your energy. So when you're ready to start, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash gravipool to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. According to Einstein's famous equation you might have heard of, E equals MC squared, some of their mass gets converted directly into energy. Yes, those same gravitational waves. And NASA has already seen this happen. The gravitational wave detector LIGO detected black holes colliding over a billion light years away. And a few solar masses just vanished into pure ripples. In fact, about 3-5% to of the mass is converted into gravitational wave energy when black holes merge. And that means the final black hole size of this example merger would be 19.24, approximately. That missing 0.76 solar masses, it turns into 10 to the 47 joules of space-time ripples, the same as a supernova, but invisible. That's like turning the sun's entire 10 billion lifetime of light into a single cosmic boing across the universe in milliseconds. And we know this because some scientists won the Nobel Prize for it with the discovery of gravitational waves. Oh yeah, and Kip Thorne was one of them. You know, the astrophysicist who was behind Interstellar. Ah, I remember watching it at the drive through cinema in 3D. Amazing experience. Except for that damn ripped goose making all kinds of strange noises in the car next to me. I actually reported it and got him kicked out. Perhaps that's why he hunts me now. But I can't be sure. Where was I? Oh, yes. Now imagine that black hole collision happening for a 70 solar mass and 42 solar mass black hole. And then even larger ones. And not just a few rogue black holes or any of the 100 million black holes roaming around the Milky Way, but all of them in the universe. Every black hole, stellar, intermediate, supermassive, and even the sometimes theoretical ultramassive. And because we are assuming a universe where dark energy goes away, they will all be drawn together as cosmic expansion reverses and gravity takes back control. But how will this all go down? And what does that mean for you, Timmy? That's right, it's time to go into the future for step three, colliding galactic black holes. Why? Because it's basically impossible for all of these billions upon billions of black holes to merge randomly. The process, if it were possible to happen, would start at the galactic level, like with the Phoenix Cluster from before. For our galaxy, this is going to happen anyway in about 5 billion years in the future, as Andromeda and the Milky Way will merge into Milkdromeda, releasing 10 to the 52 joules of energy. A number so large it'd be like you eating a pizza the size of the solar system as a human being, in one sitting. Crazy, right? As these two galaxies merge, their central black holes spiral into one another slowly while flinging billions of stars into the universe. 
And when they eventually collide, it's like our small black hole example, but you know, much bigger, forming increasingly massive beasts from millions of solar masses to billions for other galaxies. Of course, this process takes billions of years, but the energy released in gravitational waves would become so intense that the background of space-time itself would start humming, resonating like a drum that never stops. Calm down, Mongolian horse, Genghis Khan is still dead. And because Mordromeda is still surrounded by many galaxies, eventually all these galaxies could merge into some sort of super Mordromeda or be thrown out into the universe. Now, to keep on colliding all the black holes in the universe, we have to go to step four, colliding galactic superclusters. Eventually, the Great Attractor, a huge gravitational anomaly that's dragging 100,000 galaxies towards it, what's called the Linear Kea Supercluster, could allow a massive merger of all black holes that it's pulling in, including the new Supermodromeda, one at a time over up to trillions of years. Maybe. The only few stars left, red dwarfs, would be flung around or be caught by other black holes all slowly moving towards a massive merger. The absolute largest black hole we know of, remember, is Phoenix A, and that sucker could have a radius of 1970 AU, 0.031 light years. If all the black holes and stars in the galaxies around the Great Attractor were to merge, this would result in a black hole with perhaps 10 to the 17 solar masses. What's that? Yes, indeed, Mongolian horse, that's over 10 quadrillion times the mass of the sun. And the radius would be, ahem, <clears throat> wow, 30,000 light years. Gosh darn, that's huge. Also, yes, inside it would be normal for us, for a time. We would simply live and die and exist. And by the time any of this would have been noticed, humans and all life in the universe would be extinct anyway. So you don't have to worry about that, Timmy and Kyle. Now imagine this happening in huge gravitational basins like the Great Attractor all over the universe. We do know of a few, but let's just assume that there are around over half a billion Great Attractor class gravitational basins in the observable universe. And assuming they all merge into these insanely huge black holes, we then want to merge all of these monsters together. Honestly, I think I might fake Kyle. Oh, you already did. Wake up! You've got to see the ending of what happens when all of these remaining black holes merge and why it's important for you to know. Yes, it's time for the final step, 10 to the 50 years in the future. And yes, that's a lot of zeros. Now, if we could simply assume it might take between, you know, 10 to the 50 or even 10 to the 100 years for all of these 60,000 light year sized black holes to group together, eventually the final merger would happen. Everything that was once divided, matter, radiation, space-time, compresses into one singularity. One black hole in the entire universe. Nothing else. 5 to the 22 solar masses. 33 billion light years across. 520,000 times larger than the black hole from the Great Attractor. And 300,000 times larger than the Milky Way. But that's not where it ends. This is where the universe could have created a new black hole universe. Come on, Kyle, get on the horse. We need to run so fast we escape this universe before it's too late. Because back in 2025, scientists published an updated paper on an older theory that proposed our universe is actually within a black hole. It's called the Black Hole Universe Hypothesis, and it flips the idea of the end of the universe into the beginning. Now, the Black Hole Universe idea doesn't mean every single black hole out there is a universe of its own. No, there are many important rules about it. But the most important one is that it suggests that the dark energy expansion that we mentioned before isn't even real. And instead, what we are seeing is the effect of the event horizon of our black hole universe. But how does that work if currently scientists think the universe is, you know, flat and infinite? Well, here's the cool part. Much like a beetle on a ball of dung, it can seem flat for him because he is so small and the ball is so huge. But the universe, like that ball of poo, could still curve if you were large enough to see all of it. In that case, it means the universe might not be infinite and flat, but instead closed in some sort of spherical or donut-shaped thing. Or in this case, a black hole. And when a giant black hole crushes everything inside of it, the energy can bounce back out as a brand new exploding universe. So within that collapsing universe we just created by colliding all the black holes that exist, a new universe could begin with its own laws of physics and constants and galaxies. And if we were already inside a black hole universe to begin with, merging all the black holes inside of it would make yet another massive universe inside of it. It's like an infinite nesting doll of reality. Forever.
Well, there you go, Kyle. A massive f black hole forming an entire universe and destroying the one you lived in. That's what might happen. However, oh, sh he's waking up. Quick, Kyle, get the bat. We still need him to watch one more video, the one on screen right now, since, you know, we're struggling for ad revenue.